At Flight Insight, we've demonstrated instrument procedures using a number of avionics packages. Let's look now at the Garmin G5. We can't simulate these in-house, so we're working with Todd from Solid Ground Aviation here in Maryland, who offers training in a sim that can reproduce many more avionics. Check him out at his site linked here and in the description. We'll focus on the two G5s, the Garmin 430 GPS, and the GFC 500 Autopilot. We're going to shoot a simple RNAV approach, the GPS into runway 14 at Gaithersburg, to highlight how to use the G5s and the Autopilot on an instrument approach. We're starting off up here on an assigned 240 heading at 3,500 feet. We're hand flying right now, so first, let's set up the Autopilot. We push in the knob on the HSI to set the heading bug to our current heading. On the PFD, we'll push the knob in and select altitude. We'll twist the knob to a desired altitude, say we've been cleared down to 2,500 feet. On the autopilot, we'll push heading. Notice HDG mode goes active on the status bar on the PFD. Also, the status bar defaults to pitch hold mode. Even though we've set a desired altitude, we haven't yet told the autopilot how we want to get there. The autopilot itself isn't active yet. If it were, AP would be shown in the status bar in the middle. The flight director, which is the purple triangle, is indicating what to do to hold the desired heading and pitch. We should follow that as we hand fly, and when we do activate the autopilot, it'll follow the flight director. ALTS, or altitude capture mode, is armed, as shown here. It'll activate when we approach the selected altitude at 2500. In order to get down to 2500, we select VS, vertical speed mode, which goes active, and then use the wheel to set a desired descent rate of 500 feet per minute. We could also use IAS or indicated airspeed and set a desired airspeed for the descent. Notice the flight director indicates a pitch down. When we push AP, the autopilot goes active and we would reduce power for a descent here. Dual axis autopilots like the GFC 500 control the pitch and bank of the aircraft, but you're still in charge of power. ATC tells us to expect vectors for the RNAV 1-4, on the Garmin 430, we push PROC, then ENTER to select approach, then ENTER for the RNAV 1-4. On the 430, it's best to load the full approach, so we start from Rouen and activate it. For vectors, we'll expect to intercept outside the final approach fix, so the segment between Begka and Timby. We scroll down to Timby on the 430, then hit MENU and activate LEG. Now let's say ATC gives us a turn while still in the descent, telling us to turn left heading 210. We twist the knob on the HSI, and because we're already in heading mode, the autopilot will turn us that direction. Notice the turn rate indicator at the bottom of the PFD. A standard rate turn is at the tick marks. Within 200 feet of our bug 2500, the selected altitude blinks, and as we approach it, altitude capture ALTS goes active with altitude hold ALT now armed. Once we're at 2500, ALT then goes active. We increase power for the level off. We continue on this vector. ATC has us on a base leg for the final approach course. The plan is to turn us to intercept on a 30 degree angle such that we should be established inbound no closer than three miles from Timby. When we get our approach clearance, we're told to turn left heading 160 until established. We should arm approach mode on the autopilot by hitting APR. GPS mode goes active as the autopilot will intercept and track the approach course. Altitude hold mode remains active, though glide path mode GP is now armed. The approach course indicator has already come alive, showing the course deviation in pink. The glide path indicator comes alive along the side. The autopilot will hold us at 2500 until glide path intercept. We also have a representation of the course deviation on the HSI and another glide path indication to the right of that. Once we're established inbound, we should set our heading bug to our heading. This is crucial if we ever need to switch back to heading mode on the GPS. When the glide path comes in, GP mode goes active and the autopilot flies us down on the approach. Our job is to manage power and configuration for a stable approach speed and to monitor all the steps the autopilot's making, of course. The decision altitude on the approach is 789. When we get there, we click off the autopilot and commence a climb out for the missed approach, a straight out climb. Passing the runway threshold, we hit OBS to unsuspend and can push GPS mode to track the missed procedure. We'll set the missed altitude to 2100 and a climb speed of 74 knots. 
once we're at a comfortable altitude and confirm the flight director is doing what we want the airplane to do, we can re-engage the autopilot, which will fly us on the mist. So there's a step-by-step -step of an IFR approach using the dual G5 setup with a really good autopilot. Thanks again to Todd at Solid Ground Aviation for setting this up. He's based out of Tipton Airport in Fort Meade, Maryland if you can stop in for some training, no matter what your experience level is. He maintains an SG-1 BATD to provide instruction out of and is approved for FAA wings training. His site is linked here, as is Flight Insight, where you can always find great online ground school training to go along with your in-flight or in-sim experience.